Greetings, I'm Lothorn, and welcome to this mod showcase for Medieval Craft for Minecraft version 1.16.5, also available in versions from 1.12 to 1.20. I'm using Java Edition Minecraft and forced to run this Dark Age mod by F. Funaray 2004. Ideal Craft is a two-part mod. One installation is for the structures, the other is for the weapons and armor. I'll be showing you both. To start with, you'll need to be able to make the weapons. To do this, we make a hammer. After the hammer, you need to make the project table. This is made with paper, iron, and wood. It's a bit like a crafting table, however, it only accepts iron ingots. You put them into the left slot, then you pick which weapon's head or end you'd like to create. Once you click on it, it is made into an iron bar costing three iron ingots. You then take that iron bar and you put it into a blast furnace. It smelts up fairly fast and turns into a glowing hot red iron bar. You then shift right click that on top of an anvil. You take your hammer and you right click it once. This will give you a glowing hot weapon's end and you right click that into a source of water. This will create the cooled version. Then you use the crafting recipe from your crafting UI or your intuition to create a weapon. For this axe head, we put two sticks under it, it on top like that, and we get the Dane axe. Most of the weapons made with this mod are rendered with these lovely 3D models and they have their own list of stats and a bit of information of what period they are from. This mod is meant to be used with the Epic Combat mod, and the weapons have their own beautiful animations. It's not required to have the Epic Combat mod, but it does make the mod a lot cooler if you do. If you can't be bothered with faffing about with all the smeltering, then you can instead take two sticks and create the Mighty Stick. The 1,500,000 BC to 21st century weapon. Clearly the mod maker is a Shad Adversity fan. If you're looking for a range option over the stick that forgoes forging, perhaps you might want to make the medieval musket. First, ammo is required. That is made with iron nuggets surrounding gunpowder. This will give you a bullet. After the bullet, the musket can be made or beforehand, depending on how you wish to proceed. The musket is made with wood, iron, and the iron nugget. It can be fired in the epic combat mode or in normal mode, giving you a green stick for outside of first person, but is also usable within first person. After firing, it has a ridiculously long reloading time. It comes also in the option of attaching a knife to it, making it a musket with a bayonet. Sticking with the gunpowder weaponry theme, next we have the Holy Hand Grenade of Antioch. Crafted with gunpowder in the center, gold surrounding it, and then bottles of enchanting. The Holy Hand Grenade of Antioch is the hand grenade upon high. Say, O Lord, bless this thy hand grenade, that with it thou mightest smite thy enemies to tiny bits, in thy mercy. And the Lord did grin, and the people did feast upon the lamb, and the sloths, and the carp, and the anchovies, and the orangutans, and the breakfast cereals, and the fruit bats, and the large tulips. And the Lord spake, say, First thou shalt take out the holy pin, then thou shalt count to three. No more, no less, three shall be the number thou shalt count, and the number of the counting shall be three. Four shalt thou not count, neither count thou two, excepting that thou then proceed to three. Five is right out. Once number three, being the third number, be reached, then lobbest thou thy holy hand grenade of Antioch towards thy foe, who be naughty in my sight, shall snuff it. So with those instructions, one, two, three. Armor is a part of medieval craft. Armor is made through combining plates and bits of metal together. The plates are crafted by taking a hammer, taking an iron ingot, and smashing them together. Also the crafting of chain, here called chain mail, is made with iron nuggets in an X pattern. One chain mail 
and one iron plate can be crafted in thus these manners, and multiple can be made. These can be used for various bits and bobs to create the various bits of armor that this mod provides. We have a Carathian helmet, a Centurion's breastplate and Galena, plate armor, Loretic Segmenta and a Galena, Brigandine with a Great Helm, Soldier's Boots, Gamberson and a Viking Helmet, Kettle Helm, Soldier's Armor with a Conical Helm, ready for crusading. Disappointingly, the Soldier's Chest Plate is Shoulder Pads, and not other plating. Medieval Chainmail, or as some would say semantically, Medieval Chain, slash Medieval Mail. And finally, a Bassnet with Lorica Hamanet. Now that you're armored up, we can get onto the arms of the mod in all their detail. Of course, I won't be going how to craft all of them, as that's part of the fun figuring out yourself, and you now know the basics, so you won't get completely lost and be able to use that forging. To start out with, we have the classic, the long sword, followed by the arming sword, one-handed edition, a gladius for the Roman-styled man, a spear for the pokey pokey, and another spear, but with a bit on the end, probably for boar hunting, the poleaxe, one of the superior weapons of history, the great sword, that is great, a saber, a mace, Oh ho oh, oh, ho let it A shuriken with throwable action. However, I must say, it actually looks a lot better throwing-wise if you happen to be throwing it in the non-epic combat version. The katana. Ready for some anime action, milady. The... The creatively named... Viking sword. The curved sword of the scimitar. A lance, usable on the ground and on horseback. The dagger, the hidden blade. Imperious, a weapon from Shadow of the Conqueror, a book written by Shad Brooks, owner of the Shadversy Channel. It actually looks really good. It's a very nice model they gave it. It definitely does justice to the blade. Packs a fair punch and is ridiculously expensive, requiring the rapier to be created. Battle axe, sigh, butcher's knife, and yang, the Chinese sword, claymore, an epic weapon, and the even epicer, colossal sword, which lets you roleplay as guts from the berserk anime. The felchion and grossemircer. Morning Star for the Cleric, Scythe for the Farmer, or the Edgy Boy, Pelum for Shield Destruction, and Estok. The Long Sword Murder Stroke Mode, which is Reverse Grip, turning into a Polearm, and its crafting reference is rather hilarious. So this is the normal Long Sword, a 100cm blade on top, stick, and Long Sword Guard in the middle. The Murder Guard is just that, but upside down. The Danax that we had earlier, the Roland Dagger, good for punching through armor. The Hellbeard, the best weapon in medieval combat besides maybe the bow and crossbow. The Luce Rene, the armor piercing pole hammer. Pike, typically a two handed weapon for stabbing, but this is adapted for one handed stabbing and tandem for using a shield. And that's all the normal weapons. Now there are the cheat weapons, only available in creative, such as the creative sword, the mini gun. <laughs> and the Nodachi, which I can't find a crafting recipe for, and while it doesn't seem overpowered, the lack of recipe just means that's a creative weapon only. And finally, there is the Sword of Swords. Not craftable, but not a cheat either. Excalibur, the Sword in the Stone, can be found throughout the world while exploring, but you are not worthy of such power. You must defeat an Ender Dragon to gain the honor to draw the sword. Dragon defeated, and Excalibur's is ours to claim. Apparently, it evaporated. Huh. Well, that seems like a bug to me. I don't think that should be happening. Apparently, we're not the true king of England. Anyways, Excalibur, a lovely longsword. Gives us speed, strength, and resistance. My goodness, what a beautiful weapon. Need some foes to fell. Well, we wield it. Well, 
That was straightforward. All right, bring it on. King of England coming through. Oh man, this thing. This is amazing. I love it. Hopefully it's not buggy if you experience it. And maybe the mod maker will see this video and let me know what I did wrong, or one of you lovely fine folks will do that as well. This mod also offers weapon modification in the form of these Tintium Nuggets, which sometimes randomly drop from creatures you happen to kill. It's a rare drop, but every once in a while you get it. This can be taken and in combination with a sword. If you put the nugget in your offhand and the sword in your main hand, and right click, it combines together and gives the sword sharpness one. You can do this multiple times with a simple nugget until you get to sharpness three. Then you need to combine the nugget with netheract to get an ingot. The ingot can then be combined with the sword till you get sharpness six. Then it requires you to combine the ingots with endstone to get chunks. Chunks get you up all the way to sharpness nine, finally requiring you to require the chunks with obsidian to get slabs, and one slab combined with a sword with a sharpness 9 will give you a sharpness 10 sword. It's a rewarding system to add enchanting to felling hordes of zombies. I quite enjoy it. There are more enemies to fell than mere zombies though for the weapons and armors of this mod, as added are a load of different medieval men for you to discover and fight throughout the world, being Roman legionary, Archers, Knights, Roman Centurions, Soldiers, Vikings, and more Vikings. They come with multiple different weapons for the creature types and a very aggressive AI. These enemies can be found throughout the world at various different locations, such as buildings like this castle fortress thing here. They spawn naturally throughout the world filled with soldiers ready for your blood, but also treasure in the chests hidden within, and the sets of armor for the intrepid adventurer. Here we have the fort. If you don't want to bother finding the fort, then you can instead create it in creative mode with the building's blocks. The medieval crafting structure blocks are found in the creative menu, and there's one for every building type. To make them, you simply take one of these blocks, slap it down on the ground, Put a redstone signal on it and flick the signal. And then it shall create the structure quite a bit above ground. The bottom of the building will be level with the bottom of the block. So you might want to figure out the correct heights for them before putting them into a place. Digging down for this one about 15 blocks to get it set up right. You've already seen both the castle and the fortress. There is also the destroyed fortress, an old ruin where you can set up your starts of a base. It's got diamonds and gold in it, and some good old fashioned hidden chests buried within its walls. The next building structure the mod adds is the magic tower. Simple, straightforward tower, can spawn within the world, or you can drop it yourself. Has chests of various supplies in it, lots of knights guarding it, and if you go all the way to the top, you'll find a group of wizards. Next is the monastery. Boy, this building is nostalgic for me. It consists of two buildings, a library and a main church of worship. Doors are a little bit wonky, but inside you get these pews and the stained glass, a desk, altar for preaching to the crowds, and something about this just reminds me of playing with other Minecraft mods with my brother when I was a kid. And the first time I walked in here, it was just such a special feeling. The library is also nice. It's got a whole bunch of bookshelves in it. And there's loads of villagers around here. A little dark on the inside of the library. Lots of books, lots of enchantments. Probably low enough light scene for monster spawn. And a second story with more books, tables, and a bunch of beds for the monkus villagers to sleep in. From Monastery, we go to the Romans. The Roman fort. There's a bunch of Romans inside this fort. Just look at all of them. Got iron fence, got centurions, got soldiers, got their tents, got their walls, got their armor stands ready to go, got chests full of building supplies and fighting supplies. Probably a profitable place to raid if you can manage to fight all the soldiers. From the Romans, we have the tower. It's 
a simple medieval tower. Bunch of knights in it, bunch of soldiers, all ready to fight, guarding their supplies, and a few weapons. Then there's a Viking village full of Vikings. I think they sit nice in the tiger biome flames. Got a few huts, got a few bearded angry men with swords, axes and spears. Got a little bit of treasure, a little bit of weapons, and a bit of upstairs. Not added by the mod, but I just thought this was really interesting world gen over here. Looks like something out of Dr. Seuss or Fantastical in some way or another. Finally, we have the house, which spawns with its own group of villagers and is a house. Supposedly can be found in the world like all the other spawning things. It's got staircases, got some chests, got upstairs, got downstairs, comes with some wonky doors and beds. Very nice place to set up your home. And all that together is Medieval Craft. So I hope you enjoyed that showcase of Medieval Craft. Thank you very much for watching. And thank you to Blush Feathers on Patreon. You're a scholar, sir. A very kind of you to give me that bit of money for these videos. Anyways, catch you all next time. This was a blast.